I feel sometimes it's kind of uh, like a financial struggle sometimes. It takes patience. Uh, don't be discouraged. When you're terrified, that's probably the best place to be. A career in theater was never something that I, it was not something that I embarked on as a young person. I was interested, my mother was a painter, um, and uh, my parents had a, a sense of the importance of culture, so we would go to museums and things like that. Um, but certainly we never went to a play at all, but I was lucky in high school there was an opportunity for me to sign in late for a drama class. Um, which I did, and I decided because I loved it so much that I would become a theater arts teacher myself. And in my second year of university, I was hit, like, like I was hit by a blinding light and a choir of angels telling me that I was not going to be a teacher, I was actually going to be a theater artist. And I knew that without a doubt, I was absolutely crystal clear that I was going to be a theater artist. I started doing wildlife art in the early 90s, um, starting with wood carvings and uh, predominantly carving birds and wildfowl of different sorts, entering in a number of different competitions provincially. But uh, due to the dust that was created with wood carving, I decided to progress into painting in a two-dimensional two form on canvas or on mason board with acrylic paints. And that started probably in the late 90s into 2000s. Originally I first started with painting, so I did a lot of acrylic and oil painting. Um, and drawing was quite a bit something I did. And then I started getting into pottery and doing mosaics and uh, stained glass. And it wasn't until I was in my adulthood that I actually got into the music, so with the drumming, and then that led to kind of making the drums as well. I took my art portfolio to a, a local commercial artist in our community to share my, the portfolio with him to see what he thought of my work and whether I had a, a future in art. He was, he was very impressed with my artwork, but one of the things he did state to me was that there's a lot of starving artists out there. And that perhaps maybe scared me uh, from going into art as a career. I feel sometimes it's kind of a, like a financial struggle sometimes because um, I, I feel like there's a lot of work that has to be put into kind of gaining momentum and an awareness of what I do. We realized very quickly that not only were we creating opportunities for ourselves, but we were creating opportunities for other women in the theater community. The pinpoint of success in itself is just about being authentic and that I feel that I got to the space where I'm doing things um, and embracing my heritage and everything that I'm about. And I'm really, truly following my heart and my passion. It's really more important when I see a smile on a person's face and they, they look at something and they say, oh wow, that's nice. I remember seeing this kind of bird in my backyard or I remember seeing this when we were at the beach. And you know, when people make those kind of connections, that's, that, uh, that's really when I, I feel I've been successful as an artist. I would definitely consider myself successful. I may not be the most famous theater artist. You may ne never have heard of me. Most people that are watching this have probably never heard of me. My work is, you know, I'm, I can't show you examples of it. I'm not a published playwright. I'm a, I, I create theater with lots of people when the show is over and you didn't come see it. It didn't exist for you, right? I recognize that my, most of my body of work is memory. But I'm still here. I am still doing it. I am paying my bills. I am creating opportunities for other people who are coming up the path to, to do theater. I, I really don't know, if that's not success, then I don't know what success is. The advice, don't say no. Say yes to every experience. Don't ever think that you're above an opportunity.